You don't take baths, do you? Like ever? I don't Not ever... really. Yeah. No. I, okay. Showers uh, are just so much faster. You, it's usually like, oh no, we're running behind. I have to take a super fast shower after the gym so we can start filming a YouTube video or something. It's like, I feel like showers can go very quickly. Not to mention showers are just cleaner. Like yeah. baths, you sit in your own gunk <laughs> and you're like, you hop out and you're like, oh, clean. It's like, no, <laughs> no. I mean, it's like a hot tub. At least there's like chlorine in there yeah. to keep the water But just clean. a straight up bath. Yeah. I feel like it's better for a little for children. I feel like children like baths better than showers because then like the yeah. water is all flying in your eyes and it's just yeah you're cold when you first well, get in. Anything to avoid a tantrum, and I think is a you know a little kid would scream and yell if they had water spraying them in the face. Yeah. So yeah. Anyway, all right. Follow us for more parenting advice. <laughs> yeah, right. As we have zero children. <laughs> oh, all right. Let's roll the intro. Roll the intro. Welcome to the Let's Quit Podcast. Quitting is not always a bad thing. If you have the right mindset, quitting can be the most powerful tool you have on your journey to success. It's certainly been helpful for us. Whether it's flying through hurricanes, building our businesses, or just trying to get to bed on time, we're always trying to level up and improve our lives. This is the show where we share the lessons, experiences, and friends that have helped us live this incredible life. So let's quit the bad and grow the good together. All right, welcome back to episode 47 of the Let's Quit podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in, whether it's your first time or your 47th time uh, or more. I guess you could go back and listen to multiple, like uh, the same episode multiple times. Yeah. I don't know if anybody's do you ever, do ever that done that. No. With podcasts? Listen Absolutely. To the same. Well, no. okay, if I recommend a podcast to somebody, sometimes I'll throw it in the queue and just listen to it again. Yeah, I think there's really been only been like one podcast episode that's, that I've listened to more than once. Yeah. Well, sometimes like some of like Tom Bilyeu's, like his interviews or like a How I Built This podcast, like some of those, like I'll want to go listen to it two or yeah. three times. Yeah. The How I Built This, I think I've listened to episodes more than once. And but, then uh, some podcasts will like do reruns oh, of their yeah, episodes. Oh, like Freakonomics. Yeah. Then I'll listen to it again because I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. I do remember this one coming out two years ago, but I've learned so much since listening to it the first time. I've forgotten so much since right. listening you, to learned, it. Right, you've learned, you've forgotten, you've changed, you've done more, and it is kind of cool to listen to it a second time. But yeah, so. anyways, um, all yeah. that to say, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> thanks for listening. Uh, Share the show, that really helps. Yes, if you do enjoy the show, if it's your first time, don't worry about it, but if you've been listening to the show for a while and you enjoy it, uh, please take a second out of your day at the end of this one to uh, share it with a friend. Um, that would really mean a lot to us. Yeah. So, Even if you just screenshot, you know, what you listen to and post it to Instagram or something, every little bit helps. Yeah. So, uh, thanks for that. Um, we still did not move that to the end of the podcast like we were supposed to. <laughs> well, so. don't you worry. We'll say it again at the end too. <laughs> um, cool. Story time. What did we do this week, Jenny? This week we did a lot, but we also didn't do a lot. This last week, we've done a lot, but it wasn't all business related. We did have to go out to Mississippi this past week for Catch our up Air on Force some jobs. training. Yeah. Yep. We had some mandatory training we had to get done before the end of the year, but that training fell like smack dab in the middle of the week. Yeah. And so we're like, oh, man. It turned into a long trip. It was it, supposed to just be a weekend trip, and it turned into a whole week. So. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. It was fun. We get to catch up, see people, get some training in. Yeah. We got to fly. That's, yeah. That's, that's always, always fun. a good thing. Yeah. Um. But we had to drive. Oh, my gosh. That drive on I-10 from Houston. Okay, so I've said this before, but I'll say it again. The drive from Houston to Mississippi on I-10 is the worst drive in the entire United States. We have driven pretty much everywhere. We've driven East Coast, West Coast, Florida. Way up north. Way in the Midwest, like across the country. We've driven through California, like so many times downtown san times. francisco like everywhere not even close to as bad as i-10 is between texas and mississippi i have never been afraid for my life driving more than i have on that small stretch of i-10 from houston to mississippi it's just there's construction there's cement barriers on both sides it's there's not a ton even of trucks it's not even that it's just the drivers on the road can i just demonize the people really quick like <laughs> Like, oh my gosh, some of the worst drivers driving cars in states that don't have inspection laws or they don't enforce the inspection laws. So the cars can be driving, like, I I think it's like an auction in New Orleans or something, but they have all these cars that have been totaled, but they're like somewhat drivable. 
And so they'll like daisy chain, they'll centipede like three or four cars together and caravan four broken cars all the way to Houston or I guess other parts of the country where they fix them up and resell them. I don't know, but they're always on that stretch of I-10 Yeah. and their blinkers don't work. They don't like they don't like. And then, of course, then you've got the mouth breathing Louisiana idiots that just don't know how to drive. Everybody's stuck in the left lane and not passing anybody. Like, I'm like, uh, I don't know how the rest of the country doesn't know this, but like the left lane is for actively passing people. It is not the fast lane. It's not the fast. lane. It has nothing to do with speed other than the fact of when you pass somebody, you get back over to the right lane. But nobody does that on this stretch of I-10. Yeah, it's just it's scary. So we've started actually flying out to our drill weekends. Right. Like, well, we have an airplane that picks us up on the shuttle and we take that. Yeah, which so is the C-130 helpful. will come pick us up and we'll get some training done. And that's usually how we've been getting out there for the past couple of months. But we actually, actually had to drive for this trip. And oh my gosh, like we saw somebody legitimately get pushed off the road yeah, by a semi. A, there's a big 18 wheeler that like literally muscled and Mazda, like almost into a concrete barrier. They luckily like slid off into the grass, but like. It was so bad. Like we were taking pictures of the door of like the company that was driving that truck and we're like, this right. is we're not trying to be We're not trying to be a Karen, but like we're behind this truck and this car and this truck is just trying to pass this other car in front of it and he's not paying attention and then he blows his horn at the Mazda like he's mad at them. I was like, you're the problem here. <sighs> it was just, it was a crazy drive. It was good to be home. I can't wait to have an airplane <laughs> and we can just fly over all of those yes. jokers. Oh, and just so yeah. dumb. Well, it's a seven hour drive, which turns into a nine hour drive with construction and traffic and accidents and everything else. And yeah. oh, it, it would be a two hour flight in a little Cessna. It'd be a two hour flight and we'd be there. Yep. <sighs> but anyways, despite the we'll horrible there. drive, the rest of the trip was pretty good. It was nice to see friends. Um, we did still sell some boards while we were on the road. Um, we ended up selling about 40 boards while Man, we were you've gone. You've just been selling boards faster than I can even like call and get lumber. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, geez. We currently do not have enough built boards in the house to, to fulfill the ones I've sold. We need to go to the storage unit. That's just for up. the holidays. Yeah. Like not to mention the the inventory that we've oversold for real estate real estate agents. Right. Like of course I still, they don't need them all at once. Right, which is nice. So we still get the you know the onesie twosie like closing gifts requests on top of the thirty boards people will want like all at once for Christmas gifts. <sighs> so, so. Um, but yeah, overall a productive week. Yeah. Right before we hit record, we just got a text message from the lumber supplier letting us know that the lumber order is ready for us to go pick up. Yeah. But that's only going to, I think that's only going to carry us until the end of deer season. When we come back after Thanksgiving, we're definitely going to have to build more boards. Yep. Man, I thought we were done, but... I know. We thought we built this, like, our last batch of at least charcuterie boards, because we don't do those as often, because we sell but more I thought, cutting no, boards I thought than the charcuterie. last cutting board batch was going to be the oh, last really? one. Yeah. And then, nope. Yeah, because we were like, is it going to be the last one that we build in our garage before we start building them in the commercial space? And then we went and sold like 90 boards and we're like, there's no way this yep. is going to be the last batch we Well, build. sales picked up, like not just holiday sales, but like you've been Overall doing a better sales. job as a salesperson. So I don't know why I ever thought that was the last batch of boards. I also thought that moving into a commercial space was going to be much quicker than it was. But it is not. But it is not. We don't really have an update for you, but it's just... We're still trucking. Like nothing's... We haven't stopped looking. It's just a slow process. Yeah. So. That's... Yep. For anybody who's ever bought a house before too, it's just sometimes things take longer than you expect. You would expect. Or you want. Or so. you want. Yeah. Yes. Oh, also poor Bruce is sick. I know. Bruce the Doberman. Bruce the Doby. He, um, yeah. So he was at the kennel while we were gone for a week in Mississippi. Right. It's a great kennel. He, oh, they're They fantastic. do a great job. It's just. I don't know. He must have eaten something or swallowed string from a toy yeah, or something. Yeah, I think he ended up like chewing up a toy because that's that's how he is. He sees toys as a challenge. Yeah. He Some really toys does. he's like, oh yeah, let's play. And other toys he's like, I must destroy. Right. And I just think the play in and everything. He swallowed something he shouldn't have. And anyway. Yeah. So now that he's was a little sick. He's not feeling good. There's a lot of cleanup for us. That's about all I'm going to say about that. Yeah. Um. But poor little guy is. <laughs> He's, he's all tuckered out and tired, and he doesn't feel good, so. Yeah, so he's just been sleeping all day, but yeah. that's okay. He'll By tomorrow, he'll be ready to sprint five miles, so yeah. it's okay. Yeah, I'll take it while we can. Yes, take it while we can. Oh. Well, that was a solid 10 minutes of updating 
our entire week. So. I know. Yeah, that was pretty much our week. I yeah, just not a whole lot, but still a whole lot. I know. I know. I think because we talked about how we updated some of our boxes in the last podcast, right? Yep, like, we're yep. caught up. We went through the yep. whole thing. We're caught up. So we're caught up. On to cool. the title topic then. Yeah. All right. So why the heck are we talking about taking a bath? And gross bath water. This right. is not that kind of podcast. Yeah. <laughs> if you'd like to buy some of our bath water, you can go gross. to... Gross. <laughs> gross. That's a thing. Did you know that? What? Yeah. You like celebrities and stuff. Well, not celebrities, but like certain people on social media will sell their bath water. Yeah. Ew. Yep. Dude, I just want to sell cutting boards. Welcome it's to the internet. Okay. <laughs> I just... But we'd make a lot more money. The profit margin is a lot higher on bath water. Ugh, gross. That's okay. I'll stick with cutting boards. We still got to start that OnlyFans. Yeah, right. Oh, which, oh, did you see that they passed rules a couple weeks ago that says no longer going to do inappropriate content like that on OnlyFans? Oh. They're trying to be, I guess they're trying to be like the video version of Patreon or like sort of like a privatized YouTube. Oh, okay. And it had been used in the past for nefarious purposes with scantily clad performers yes um but apparently now they've changed it and they're no longer allowing that type of content oh so i don't know they're they gonna could've... switch their whole platform i guess like well I, that's the, what they're known for right, right well right, they're, right but their their branding and their messaging at least publicly has been huh. more sanitized and apparently now they're saying no more of that nonsense well, cool yeah, we'll see. I wish them the best of luck in completely changing the image of themselves to the public. Yeah, it's killed companies that have done that before. Yeah, um, I mean, I don't know. Hopefully they make it. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. So, <laughs> did not mean to go down a deep dive of <laughs> OnlyFans, but um, to nobody, we've never even used the website. We've never even logged never, on to it. Never, not just, once. We just know what TikTok says about it. That's yes. about it. So. Anyway, for the record, in case anybody wonders if we spend a lot of time on OnlyFans. That's a big fat no. (laughs) Uh, Cool. So we don't have a quote this week. Why are we talking about dirty bath water, Jenny? Oh, my goodness. Let's bring this back. Okay. So basically, like like Davis said, baths are gross, or at least he thinks they're gross. What? You don't think they're gross? I mean, no, I get it. But like, there's also a lot of soap in there. I mean, they're not the greatest. I definitely think showers are cleaner than baths. Yeah. So I guess we can just like blanket statement say... Baths are kind of gross. But the concept. So you, sit, ba- so you sit in your own filth, right? Right. How can you get clean if you're just sitting in all the dirt that you're trying to wash off? Right. And I get it. This is like, don't, don't, I don't know. Don't at me. Don't at me. Like, I, I get it. Baths probably work. But like, you, the, just the, the, we're using it as a metaphor here. The greater concept of sitting in your own dirty bath water. Right. You don't actually get clean. You need fresh running water to wash away the dirt. For yeah. you to actually get clean. And we do this with our mental state a lot of times. We we sit in our own routines and we sit in the same mental state and we think we can just willpower our way out of it. Um, at least that's how I feel sometimes. Like when I'm not having a good day and I just sit on the couch and I'm just a sad sack. And It feels like you're sitting, your brain's sitting in its own dirty bath water. Correct. And okay, there's just I no way. You, yeah, you see where I'm going yeah, with this? Yeah, okay. No, no, no. I'm Hopefully tracking. Hopefully the metaphor lands for the listeners. But like, I don't know. I find myself a lot of times I'm in a really bad mental state and I'm trying to just think my way out of a bad mental state, which is just like sitting in your own bath water. It's like, how clean are you actually going to get? So I guess what we're trying to say is like... You need to to put your mind in a different state. You need new thoughts, new ideas, mm-hmm. new experiences to wash away the old ones or to replace the bad ones. To put you in a better, more clean mental state. Right. And thanks. get yourself in a spot that's actually going to like improve you. Right. So thanks for listening to this week's episode and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. <laughs> <laughs> no, so we'll unpack that a little bit. So I like... Yeah. So I guess that's just the lesson here is that we need new ideas, experiences, and thoughts to propel us forward. Because if you just sit in your own bathwater, you're not learning anything, you're not growing, you're not doing anything new. And yeah, you're going to get depressed. Yeah. At least I am. No, no. That I mean, and that's the hard part too, is you think you're solving with the problem by, by not moving or not changing. You're like, oh, I don't need to. I can solve this problem. Like when you're in a really bad mood or you're like sad and depressed, you're like, no, I don't need to go up and go to the gym. I'm just so tired. I just need to lay here and take a nap. No, I don't need to read my book. I right. just need so to, that's, that's, you know, that's watch how YouTube. I learned this. That's how I learned this about myself is that I started like randomly like 
I don't know. It was towards the end of the time in North Dakota, but like I would just get up off the couch and go for a run. I was just so bored. I felt so depressed and so sad. And I was just like, I just need to do something like as miserable as I am, at least I can go for a run. Mm -hmm. And so I put on my running shoes and then I ran and I came back and I just felt so much better. And I've always been someone that's hated running, hated working out. Mm -hmm. But for whatever reason, like in that chapter of life, like working out really helped put me in a better mood what was it was it that you got like your heart pumping you changed the scenery like what yeah, was it so like the whole endorphins from working out maybe that was part of it but like mm-hmm. what i'm saying is like i'm not naturally the kind of person that gets a lot of endorphins from working out like, yeah it's just you know how hard it is to like get me to go work i just don't enjoy it i don't enjoy it before it i don't enjoy it during it and i don't enjoy it after it yeah like i just don't like working out but that's what cued me into this is like sometimes you just need a change of scenery Maybe it's pumping your blood. Maybe it's just breathing more oxygen. There's like a, oh, I heard something really woo-woo the other day. Mm-hmm. He's talking about like, oh, it's Tony Robbins. He was talking about like breathing. He's like, if your brain is the kite on the end of a kite string, the string is breathing. So the more that you're breathing, the higher your kite can fly. And that was, I guess, a really elegant way to say the more you breathe, the better your brain can function because it's got yeah. more oxygen. So I don't know what 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 it all has to do with Maybe it. It was but the sunlight and the fact that we got like zero vitamin D in the winters. I'm sure <laughs> that's a lot of it too. But like, yeah, that that's that's basically what I learned was like I have to when I'm feeling bad about myself, I have to change scenery. Yeah. At least for me, I got to get up. I got to go do something. I got to put myself in a different situation, and I can't just keep doing the same routines over and over and right. over. And it doesn't necessarily mean that like we're not saying the 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 end all be all solution is to get up and go work out. I mean that's a that's a good solution, but there's some other things we can do as well to right. pick ourselves so before, out of mental states. Right. So before we get into that, let's back up a little bit. I got a little thing on like how our brains work. Yeah. So at least this is how you and me work. So we learn something new, right? Yep. We are introduced to new information. And that goes into our brains. Well, then our brain starts to imagine what would the world be like if everybody had this information or used this information? What would my life look like if I lived by this new concept that we just learned or whatever? And then from there, we go into making a goal. Okay, if we got a really vivid f- future that looks better because we've learned this thing, let's 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 get a plan together and let's try to change that. And so we'll make a goal or whatever, like starting a business. We imagined the future and we said, sign me up for that. I'd like to be someone that runs a business. So we set a goal and we did it, right? Mm -hmm. So that's sort of how your brain works. And if you want to change your life, if you want to do something different than what you're doing currently, you've got to learn new things. You know, if you if you've got a problem that you can't solve, you're not going to be able to pull it out of your head because you haven't researched the answer. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like we talked about this a few weeks ago on the podcast, but like you can't pull something out of your head that's not there in the first place. Right. You've got to learn new information or be at least open to like thinking about it or learning new information yeah. because you're not just going to see things in your life like happen that you haven't considered or been open to before. Right. And like tons of people have done that. Like Albert Einstein's famous for like napping during the day. Like he's not necessarily learning new information, but if he had a tough problem to solve, he would just take naps. He's famous for having these like metal balls in his hand. I know Mm -hmm. that sounds way worse than it really is, (laughs) but he would, he would like take a nap in his chair, like holding these like metal objects And he'd have like a frying pan or something on the floor. And as he dozed off and dropped the metal objects, it'd make a loud bang and he'd wake up and he'd all of a sudden have the solution to his problem. But he was changing his mental state by napping. Hmm. Um, Also, people going for walks. Like how many times have you heard somebody say like, oh, I just I just had to think about it. I had to sleep on it. I had to go for a walk. Yeah. Like the change changing state of your brain really goes a long way into helping you solve problems and stuff. Jimmy Duresta talks about this. Yeah. You know, the maker guy, Jimmy Duresta. Oh, uh, well, I know, well, I you think, know, but I think I've met him once or twice before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, but like maybe the audience hasn't heard of yeah, him. No, I know. But there's super creative, like really smart guy, Jimmy Duresta, who like when he's just out and about, he's consuming so much information about the objects around him. He'll go to flea markets and he'll look at the old tools and stuff and just look at the mechanisms. He'll study it. He'll like look at it, see the little lever action or like how it's put together. And then he'll apply that technique to something like a grill where he's got this grill grate that rises and lowers based on a wheel that you spin. And like, that's how you get patented ideas is that you apply one technology in another arena and then you patent it and make a ton of money. Yeah. Like, 
nothing like yeah like our our friend andy klein like he does stuff like Mm -hmm. that too like he's got a different process i'm sure but like you're just applying different mechanisms and levers and and mechanical things in a new way but you gotta like learn them the first time yeah your brain is not just gonna magically come up with a new solution you're gonna your brain is gonna like mash together eight or ten different things you've seen before into a new idea right right there's nothing new under the sun there is nothing new under the sun Right. You just reorganize the same information a different way. Right. So anyway, that's how your brain works, if you didn't know. Oh, now that's, I know. That's what I wanted to talk about. So now we can talk about, Jenny, uh, where do we get those new ideas from? How do we, let's say we got, we, get, we need to change our state of mind. How do we get new ideas? How do we get new water to wash away our mental bath filth? <laughs> so I feel like there's a bunch of places you can run to to find new information um one is other people if you want to run to people who are doing what you want to do in the future and just observe how they live their lives that's yeah, why, so I, that's why just, I love podcasts so much because like you're able to do that so quickly i mean right so be, let's let's back up so like it's not just random people it's people that are doing what you yes, want to be doing or are the person that you want to be maybe right. they're just have an attitude that you you know wish you had Right. So you want to listen to their podcast. It's not just some random person to change the channel because then you can fill your head up with the wrong ideas and that can backfire too. So I just wanted to be really clear about that. Yes. Where else can we go? Um, I mean, besides other people, um, books, like different experiences. And it's not, and I know where it's like, oh, well, books, isn't that just the same thing as podcasts, just in word form? But you're not necessarily learning about people in books. You're learning about different experiences and how people have conquered problems in the past. And it gives you a new perspective. So that's another good one. Yeah. If you Um, don't know, if you don't know where you want to go, like, I don't know, we felt like this when we were in North Dakota. Yeah. Like before we saw, before we had the vision to have this business and be hurricane hunters and all that, like we had no idea what it was going to look like. Mm -hmm. We just knew we needed to get out of where we were yes and then in that case it's do something that doesn't make sense to you then just try something right. at that point um i mean like just try different things until you find something you like i mean like i don't want to get into the action steps too much yeah. but yeah <laughs> but I, I mean we were sitting in north dakota and we knew we're like we have to get out of the air force we cannot do this forever like because we met a lot a lot of people in the air force not a single not a single person that we met of any rank and any job and any career field had the lifestyle that we wanted it doesn't mean they're bad people they're great people it's just just, it wasn't what we personally wanted for our lives right and i felt like and i felt and this sort of gets into like our own interpretation i felt like staying in the air force would have been a waste of our talent and abilities not that we couldn't have done great things but like i felt like we were able our skill sets were better suited elsewhere i guess that's the Mm -hmm. way to say it it's like The Air Force is a great organization, but it does not need us. Yeah. There are other places and other people that need us far more than what the Air Force needed from us. So we just knew we we were sitting there in Minot. We were like, we have no idea what this is going to look like. But we just set a we set a date. We said by when was it? It was like. So our, our mentality on that was like, we just decided, this, of course, we're going down a rabbit hole of this, but like, it's a podcast. That's what you signed up for. <laughs> um, we decided we were not going to get master's degrees. Yeah. We knew that we wanted to start a business. We didn't know what kind of business. We didn't know what it was going to look like, but we just decided to promote and rank in the in the military and the officer side. At a certain point, you have to have a master's degree from college. And that, so because of that, everybody usually starts working on them pretty early. So right. and within so the first we decided, year you join, they usually start. Yeah. So we decided arbitrarily that that was going to be what, because we, we, we knew that if we got comfortable, we would just kick the can down the road. As much as we hated it, we knew about ourselves that we go for comfort above all else. Yeah. And so as much as we hated our situation, as long as it was comfortable and boring, we'd know we'd stick with it. So we made ourselves very uncomfortable by deciding that we were not going to get master's degrees. Yeah. That looks very stupid and very short-sighted, but that's that's how we use that as a tool to motivate us to then find a reason to get out. Right, to find something else. Like, I don't know what it is now, but it can't be this. Right. And Nor so, do I want it to be And then this. Jenny gets an email one day saying that our dream unit is hiring. And so we go down, and you guys know the end of the story. Like, we go down, we interview with the Hurricane Hunters, we get the jobs, and then guess what? They only want us part-time. So now we've got all this time opened up to run the businesses that we were planning on running. And we thought, holy snot, the perfect opportunity. But had we gotten a master's degree... 
I don't we know. wouldn't have time. We wouldn't have had time. We I don't know that you would have even looked at the hot jobs list. Probably email not. That you got because, because I would have been too invested mentally and financially at that point in a master's right, degree. Because you also incur a service commitment. If you take out tuition assistance and start working on your master's degree, the Air Force will help pay for it, but you got to stay in longer. Right. And if you start doing that, then you're like, oh, well, I can't look outside of the Air Force because... I'm not qualified for it because I got to stay longer. And you probably would have missed that email. And right. We never would have gotten our dream jobs. Right. So there comes a point where you just have to do something that's a little uncomfortable. Try something new that you've never tried before just to get yourself like off the track that you're currently on. Right. We do that. Like I do this all the time uh, with sushi. With sushi. With sushi. So okay. I grew up East Texas. Mm-hmm. It like, oh. Landlocked. I'm sure there's some great sushi there. (laughs) I'm trying to figure out a very nice, polite way to describe East Texas. Backwoods, boonies. Drive 20 minutes to get to not even a grocery store. How far away is like the real, like legitimate grocery store? Well, it depends on how far you live from town. Like a super center Walmart or something. Well, we had a Walmart. Okay. A Walmart. Okay. And... Yeah, sorry. Um, a Dollar General. Well, there's so there's Dollar Generals everywhere in the rural South. Yeah, like that is the grocery store for most people. Gotcha. In those small little towns. Okay. Anyway, so middle of nowhere, you don't got much. Middle of nowhere, Texas, you don't got much, and the food there is beef and chicken <laughs> and all the Southern food that you eat on Thanksgiving. Dairy Queen. <laughs> Dairy Queen. Like, anyway, it's it's exactly what you think it is. And I, I had never tried sushi. I had never really, I'd really never even seen it on a menu anywhere unless we were traveling somewhere. But by then I was so scared to try it. And anyway, sushi was probably just a weird thing for you to say that you liked. Yeah, like, like raw why? fish. Where do you eat sushi? Why would you eat raw fish? Yeah. No, fry that catfish and eat some hush puppies. Like yeah. anyway, so sushi is not something that I grew up eating. And so when I was first stationed in California, I was like, you know what? Let's give this whole sushi thing a try. Um, I had a really good friend, Will, um, that was like opening my mind to like the rest of the world outside of <laughs> East Texas uh, when I moved to to California after college. But like, I was I, I was I was growth mindset enough to say, you know what, I want to try sushi. But I knew that if I read the description of the sushi roll, I would never eat it. Yeah, knowing that there was eel sauce and octopus and raw fish and oh, I don't like tuna and that's cat food and like. All these things start going through your head if you start reading the description. So what I started doing was I just ordered a roll. I would like I would like literally cover my finger and I would just read the title of the roll, like the name of the yeah. sushi roll, and I'd cover up the ingredients. And I'd be like, oh, that sounds fun. Let me order that. <laughs> and then I'd try five or six different things of sushi. And then after I tried it and liked it, then I would go read the menu. And I'd try to find things and figure out what I liked. Yeah. So. And you ended up liking it. Yeah. And now I love sushi. Yeah. Like. We were talking right before we hit record, like after we're done with this podcast, that's what's for lunch. So like, it's, it's crazy that you've got to put yourself intentionally in uncomfortable situations to find what you like, because you just, you're not going to do it otherwise. You're going to psych yourself out. It's too uncomfortable. Right. The risk and reward, you know, your brain starts playing that game instead of like actually trying to find something that you like. Okay. So action steps. How do people actually... Oh, do this you're ready to move i'm ready to move okay. I, I, let's let's give people what they came here for yeah we're sitting in the bathwater at this point we gotta yeah we gotta give them something else yes <laughs> all right action steps uh what do we need to do then jenny to uh stop taking bath how do we take mental showers oh my gosh well that is the first action step is ding there it is is to take a shower and and i don't literally. mean that like literally maybe i kind of mean that literally i don't know well like, i put that in there shower. as a joke of like quit taking baths Just action steps you are now a shower person take a shower you're now a shower person All congratulations right. action step number two um buy a best-selling book about something you know nothing about or maybe something that like you disagree with maybe you're not on the same side of you know that argument and just learn something new like shock your brain yeah i mean like literally go find something that makes you uncomfortable, something that you know nothing about. And you might find that you see things from a different perspective. You know, don't read a book and try to demonize the person who wrote it. Really try to understand what it is that they think and the rules that they live by and and try to, or if it's on another topic that you just don't know anything about, just absorb, just be a sponge. Mm -hmm. You're not judging the information as it comes in. You're just absorbing. You're like, oh, I didn't know how that's that. I didn't know how that worked. 
Now, you may or may not like that subject by the end of the book, but at least you know a little bit about it and you've been exposed to it. And you say, okay, not marine biology. Yes. You know, get a book about dolphins. And if you absolutely hate it by the end of the book, okay, I know that I want to do nothing with the ocean. Yes. That's that's 70% of the earth right there. There you go. Just you... helping you out, helping you <laughs> narrow down your choices. Right. And this especially helps if you don't know what you want. Maybe you're right. stuck in a stage of life and you're like, look, I have no idea what's next, but it is not this. Right. So that's so maybe you don't buy a book, but that's the next action step is when you do feel stuck, change the scenery, rearrange your office, go for a run, go to go shopping, like do something outside your normal routine to sort of wash away the... I don't know, the stuckness feeling. Right. And that's the hardest thing to do. Because I mean, like, you don't want to go. Oh, yeah. I mean, like people it, people that suffer from depression like really bad, a lot of times they can't get out of bed because they're just so stuck in that mental rut. Mm-hmm. But if they can just get out of bed, their, their day is much better. So again, I'm not trying to belittle mental health and all that stuff, but like sometimes just a change of scenery can go a long, long way to helping you like stay active. And, and I forward. think even understanding that you're not going to want to do it yeah. in the moment, like just know if you don't want to do it, like if you don't want to change your scenery or you don't want to get off the couch or try something different, like that's, that's normal. Know that that's coming and then it'll be easier to say, well, I'm going to do it anyways. Yep. Um, that's literally how I go to the gym in the mornings is I'm like, I, I'm not supposed to like it. I'm not supposed to yeah. want to go. And then I'm yeah. like, okay, well, now I'm just sitting here being a baby because I know the answer, you know? Yeah. I literally, I do not want to get up and go until I am like three-fourths of the Dude, way through Even my Olympians. There was a, a motivational video I used to watch from like Olympic swim team. And they were basically mm-hmm. talking about how much they hated the pool, how cold the water was in the morning. Like people that literally spent seven, eight hours in the pool a day. And they're talking about how they hate waking up and going to the pool. It's no different for them. Like it's everybody not. wants to sleep in. Nobody wants to jump into pool, cold pool water at 4 a.m. Yep. So anyway, um, anything else? I think that's pretty much it. Oh, There's announcement. Steps. Uh, 50th episode. Yeah. We are doing a big Q&A for the 50th episode. We really like the podcast peeps. That's what we call you. Um, <laughs> when we talk about you behind your back. <laughs> Um, you are the podcast peeps. You are the ones that are most invested in us. You give us most of your time. You understand things at a complexity much deeper than the average YouTube commenter. So yes, um, that's a huge com- Well, it's an easy compliment to get, but <laughs> yeah, there's <laughs> anyway, anyways. we, we, we just want to answer your questions, um, more thoroughly in this format. So for right. our celebration for our 50th episode, we are doing a big Q and a, so if you got a question, you got something that you've wanted us to tackle or, or a topic or something like that, let us know. We'll, probably tackle it in the 50th episode send an email to let's quit podcast at gmail.com no apostrophe all one word let's quit podcast at gmail.com and uh send us your question we'd love to answer it we did a we did a q a video on our youtube channel not too long ago but i feel like for the podcast we'll be able to go more in depth this is Mm -hmm. i mean this is the platform that we go more in depth on like we don't talk about some of the stuff on youtube that we talk about here yeah so Anyway, if you ever wanted to know something about us uh, within reason, <laughs> within yeah, <laughs> well, uh, well, I mean, you can send your question. We just, just might not answer. We it. just no. might not answer. So, anyway, um, yeah. Anything else? I think that's pretty much it. Okay, great. Thanks so much. If you like the show, please leave us a review on the podcast app of your choice. We'd really appreciate it. Share the show with a friend. That's the best thing you can do to help yes. us out. And uh, if you really want to help us out, buy us a cup of coffee or lunch. Go to patreon.com slash Jenny and Davis and find a tier that works best for you. And we would greatly appreciate your support. Alrighty, till next week.